so here it is, our Navitel R10 dash cam review. This unit was kindly sent to us by Navitel. Stay tuned until the end for your chance to win this very dash cam. On the side of the box are the spec highlights. On the end of the box, details about the Navitel DVR Center software. On the other side, full images of the dash cam and the standard features. And on the other end, there's the unit model and the fact that it comes with Wi-Fi as standard. And round the back, on the underside of the box, it details the package contents in various languages. So let's remove the lid and show you what's inside. Once you remove the lid, this is what you're greeted with. On the side of the box here, we have a Navitel branded lens cleaning cloth. Next out of the box, the interesting camera mount. This is quite unique. Circular mount, magnetic in appearance with a 3M sticker on the back. Next up, well, this will be the golf ball style camera. We'll come to that later. Let's remove the protective packaging and the cardboard layer and see what greets us underneath. Here we have the warranty card and inside you register your details on the appropriate language page. Next up, the user manual which is available in various languages. Inside the manual, the basic layout of the product, the design layout and package contents, specifications, installation details, and the button layout and the Navitel DVR app. Interestingly, the R10 comes with a digital speedo readout. Moving on from the manual, next in the box we have this spare 3M adhesive. This is useful if you need to refix the camera in a second car or if you sell your car. Also included in the box is this PC cable. This is USB-A to mini USB. Handy if you don't want to take the card out. Next, the power supply. This would appear to be their standard power adapter. And yep, looking at the end of it, yeah, just an LED. I've mentioned this before, you really need a USB socket here. This is your generic sprung loaded contacts power supply, which you can buy from most retail stores. This one is rated at up to one and a half amps at five volts. You simply plug the mini USB in here into the base and then plug this bit into your cigarette lighter as usual. Just attach the R10 magnetically after that. The R10 base is unique. Contact here and here, and a center pin here which is magnetic, and their friction ring around here. The mini USB plug plugs in here on the main base. Next up, let's unbox that main camera which is a very unique design. The camera features this rather golf ball design, which is absolutely unique and very distinct. The display on the back is a 1.2 inch twisted pneumatic display, though it's not touch sensitive. The side panel to the right revealing further access. The removable side panel reveals access to the mini USB PC slot, the reset button, and the micro SD 64 gig SD card slot. Additionally, on the left hand side, you find the main power button and also the microphone hole, which gives you audio recording. On the underside of the unit are the main four access buttons. These are menu, up, down, and okay. On the front of the unit, you will find the camera, a full HD 1080p at 30 frames a second camera, complete with six layer glass and a 165 degree field of view. On the top, the main charging points. These consist of three main contacts, the left, right and central pin. As an added feature, these are magnetic. This allows for easy removal and addition of the camera as and when it suits the user. 
The simplicity for the user to remove or add the unit as and when they require is a great security feature, as is the rotational position adjustment as the user requires. The only concern is logically these two pins need to align to these two pads. Therefore, what happens if, whilst this pin aligns with this pin, you rotate it through 90 degrees? Now, these two pins here don't align at all with the pads. What happens when we try this? A road test will reveal. Only one way to find out, I guess. Try it. So when we get to the car, we plug the USB port into here, plug this port into the cigarette charger, and attach the camera. Let's go try it. Out to the car we go. Now that we're in the car, you can see the standard cigarette lighter charger. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with the USB charging port, unlike my car. Whilst the R10 with its mount is actually taller than most dash cams, it's also much skinnier. As a result, it will be a lot easier to hide it behind the rear view mirror. As you can see comparing it here to the 622, it is noticeably thinner. This unique design might stand out a little. If you're in any way worried though, remember, this unit does come with a magnetic removable mount. You can always take it away. Personally, I think it will be fine, and as the camera comes with a parking mode, I think you'd be better off leaving it fitted in case anything happens whilst you're away. Should you want to save a clip, just press the power button at any point whilst the camera's recording. The menu button puts the unit into standby. Press the power button again, so you get this screen, and now when you press the menu button, you can get into the menu structure. Personally, I found the menu layout a little difficult to navigate, and the small screen doesn't help because now you have multiple menus to get through. However, everything you need to adjust is easily accessible once you find it. It's not as intuitive as the next base menu structure, which is of course touch screen, but then it doesn't cost as much either. I think a case of RTFM, and then once set up, you'll probably need to never touch these screens again. I mentioned earlier about those pins and alignment. Now it's great to be able to turn the camera to point it where you like, but logically if the pins aren't aligned, the camera doesn't have power. Given that the camera has a 165 degree field of view, that shouldn't be an issue. Tilt up or down would be nice though. As an additional safety feature, you can have the camera display your GPS speed on the screen. Whilst you do need to keep your eyes on the road, this may help prove your innocence if you weren't speeding. Now onto the road test, and let's check out that mic. Out of shadow, into bright sunshine. Let's see how it copes with that. Back into shadow. Back into sunshine, and back into shadow again. As you just heard in that test, the microphone really isn't that sensitive. The audio is quite quiet. It takes a 12 dB gain in an editing suite to make a voice heard, but obviously loud noises like crashes will be fine. One thing that wide angle lens does not come with is a polarizing filter. As you can see here, the reflection on the dash when the sun's shining on the speaker grill is quite significant. So it's a pity at this price point it's not included. Equally, coming out of shadow into sun, at certain angles there's quite a noticeable lens flare. This is due in part to the shape and size of that wide angle lens. So as we come up through the centre of Ross and White, let's just see what the colours look like. Lots of different colours of shot faces here, lots of the facades. Let's see how the camera copes with the change through the centre of town here. High contrast scene bright white buildings and into shadow, how does the camera cope? When we bring up the video scopes you can see it flatlines on all three colours in the top left corner where it's completely white. This is because the camera's topping out so it's washing out any of the highlights. That said, the colour reproduction is pretty good and the shadow detail is exceptional. This is a 1080p camera, so number plates are easy to read, and even at 200%, looking at that shop window, you can see everything is clear and easily visible. I know we've checked the mic in town, but 
let's try it out on the motorway just to make sure it's not something that we've missed. The fact that I had to add subtitles reinforces the point that the microphone is a little bit lacking. The camera, on the other hand, copes quite well with shadows. Sunlight, not so much. The sky's still very washed out here. Coming back up the dual carriageway the other way, when we're pretty much all in sunshine, it's a different story. Now, whilst the sky is blown out a little, the road is perfectly well exposed and everything is clear and easy to see. It seems to be more of the high contrast scenes the camera struggles with. And I'm wondering if in part this is due to the night vision that the camera has. It uses the GC2023 sensor, so let's check out some night shots. Driving back through Ross and Mai, this time at 5 to 8, it's 25th of March, and you can actually see it's actually a lot better. The camera actually works better at night than it does during the day. I mean, look at the contrast in this scene. Lots of highlights from the lights, but lots of darkness because it's night, yet the camera copes exceptionally well. They really have given it night vision. Having already seen the daylight footage, I was actually quite surprised at this. I was expecting the night vision to be uh, more of a gimmick. It turns out it's not. It really does work exceptionally well at night. Now, even when we've left the town and we're actually now on one of the outroads, there's only occasional lighting here. It's only on one side of the street. And even with my dipped bean headlights, you can see it's actually a really well illuminated scene. Despite the fact, that actually, it's not that bright. Even on the dual carriageway. Now, I appreciate these are BMW laser lights, but I'm on, in essence, dip beam here. The only light you're getting is from my dip beam. Yeah, everything seems exceptionally well exposed. Well done, Navatel. It really does have night vision. Okay. Here's an unlit country scene, so it's literally just my main beam. And yet again, everything is really well lit. Oncoming vehicle just coming around that bend now. Now down to dip beam. And yeah, everything is still really well exposed despite the oncoming car. Okay, now the headlights are in adaptive mode. So they actually shape the beam around the vehicle oncoming. Yet again, no issues with exposure, none whatsoever. I mean, when you compare the day and night shots, it literally is night and day, because the night shots are so much better, which seems strange. But then again, maybe that's what night vision gives it. Slightly worse daytime performance in preference of night vision. So, in the box you get the R10 dash cam. Here's magnetic mount. The charger. The PC cable a spare sticky mount, the warranty card, and the user manual. The R10 comes equipped with a full HD 1080p camera recording at 30 frames a second, a 1.2 inch twisted pneumatic display complete with digital speedometer, impact protection that records automatically even when you're away from the car. Videos are automatically saved with full GPS location data and it even has a magnetic mount. The R10. A unique and very interesting little camera with excellent night vision, not bad daytime vision, and the microphone really is the only letdown. Ultimately for $99.99, it's worth it. That said, at the moment, on Amazon, it's on offer. $79.99. But we're giving away this very camera, the one you've just seen reviewed. Here's how you win. Drop a like on the video and comment why you want to win this camera in the comment section below. Winner will be drawn at random in a few weeks. Good luck! Thank you for watching, but remember to subscribe and hit that bell.